Hey guys, I'm Matt, also known as Great Ball Pit, and I'm here at BrickCon 2019 in Seattle to give you guys a tour around the layout. Um, this year we have approximately 60 modules, 60, 65 modules, and 14 to 15 builders uh, collaborated to make this cool layout here. Um, it's the biggest layout we've had at BrickCon yet, and it's probably the best. Let's get started. We will start here at uh, Dave Gobi's water wheel. It is a rotating wheel style module that dumps the balls out the back. It's going into a Brick World, Brick World 2018 ball pump with a turntable top so you can adjust the output any direction you want. That goes into a small conveyor based on the WM01 module. And from there, we are moving into one of my new modules for this year. This is uh, the Money Bin, which features uh, Scrooge McDuck hoarding as many balls as possible because with the cost of these balls on Brickling these days, these are pretty much worth a dollar each Canadian. And so I've been having a few troubles with this module. It's jamming up a little bit on the inside, but it seems to be working fine now. It's From there, we are going to be moving into another one of uh, my new modules for this year. This is Multipath. And this is a ball splitter, so, or sorry, a path splitter. So what happens is a bunch of balls can fall in here and then I can output in two different paths. And that's good for this year because we don't have too much space, so I thought I could get two lines of modules in a smaller amount of space by using the pass letter. On the back line here is one of my older modules, Gray Lime, simple conveyor belt. Um, it feeds uh, the balls up the conveyor through a gravity-fed splitter. Half the balls go back into the module through the uh, pachinko mechanism here, and the other half go out through this little sewer grate thing. Uh, after Grey Lime, we are moving into one of my newer modules as well. This is, uh, I call this one Splatty Yuki. Um, the original splat gear mechanism here was designed by Aki Yuki, the famous Japanese GBC builder. What I've done is taken his mechanism and doubled it up. And I've done an interesting output here with uh, some of the uh, engine intake pieces, which is kind of fun. I also got to use up a bunch of my coral corner tiles that I got on the pick brick wall. Uh, from there, we are moving into one of my tall Technic conveyors. Very reliable conveyor. Um, I'm feeding a ski jump, and that is going to be uh, launching the balls into this module that we will get back to in a second. Now, let's jump back to the other output of the multipath quickly. So, the orange path here is leading into Lori's compact cardin. Uh, Lori George, he's uh, out of New York. A uh, very famous builder, you guys have seen his nine hole mini golf, etc, etc. Him and Stuart Roll collaborated on this for Brick Fair this year. And there is instructions for this module available and I would highly recommend it because it's got that great mechanical look and it's extremely reliable. I've run it for over 20 hours with no problems and that's right after building it with the instructions. So, great module. From there we're moving into uh, my shared power circus which is four modules running off one XL motor. The first module is a wheel designed by Lass. He's a builder out of uh, Europe, and there's instructions for this wheel online. Uh, his website, brickhub.org. Um, after the last wheel, we are going to be dropping some balls through this basketball hoop here into another one of my designs. I call this Whirly Gig. It's kind of a rotating axle pusher. Um, there's free instructions for this on my website at greatballpit.com, and that is lifting uh, the balls up into this next module, which is a push arm module, originally designed by Kevin Mitchum. Now this push arm is also very reliable and very satisfying to watch. It's slow, there's some anticipation, and then you get your, your dump of balls at the top. So a lot of people like this one. It's one of the more, it's one of my most popular modules. Um, from there we are moving into uh, another version of the WOM conveyor which is a simple lift. I've decorated this one as an elephant, and it is dropping balls into the same mechanism that the ski jump is. And that is the throne, which is designed to look like a toilet. There's no other way to put it. Uh, the balls are pumped up to the top of the module using a Brick World 2018 uh, mechanism. Really reliable mechanism. I also recommend, if you're interested in starting in GBC, take a look at the Brick World 2018 ball pump. Rock solid. Everyone, everyone uses it, and we all like it. Um, the throne was a little bit difficult to, uh, 
to put together just because I had to find four of these old corner uh, ski uh, ski pipe pieces. Now they came in an old snowboard set where you would only get one corner in each set, so they're hard to come by. People don't usually have um, multiples of them on Bricklink. So with four separate orders, I managed to acquire a whole bowl, and that's how it came together. After the uh, throne, we move into my EV3 counter. Um, I lost the count from yesterday, but we were at around 11,500, I believe, <clears throat> for the first day. And it looks like we're almost at 2,000 for today, and we've only been up for about an hour and a half, I believe. So from the EV3, oh, one other note. Uh, for the EV3 counter, you can see I used the new large sprockets as well, just to try them out, and they seem to be working fine. Uh, from there, we're moving into a minecraft theme module called Climate Change. This is actually built by my wife. Um, I handed her the parts and the instructions for the Brickworld 2018. She put it together. She wanted to, She likes Minecraft. She wanted to do a theme. I was like, why don't you try climate change? Because you can do the two biomes. And she took the pieces and rummaged through my collection and put this together. So it's her first module. And it's running fine. From there, we are moving into this grain elevator, which is part of my Old Town Road module, which is themed based on the, you know, the Billboard Top 100 song that was huge this whole year. And you can see Billy Ray's in his brand new sports car, Lil Nas on his horse, and they're pushing balls around this racer track, uh, which is, um, I, I built the, the pushing mechanism to this mountain here. So from this sweeping Old Town Road module, the balls, just based on the momentum, are getting pushed down this ramp here into one of our newer builders modules. This is Neil's module. This is uh, the carrot patch. And like Neil, many of us AFOLs have recently acquired entire pick brick cups full of carrots. Neil's the first to put them to good use. He's built a conveyor using the carrots and the carrot stems uh, jammed into the older, uh, smaller Technic tread. And it seems to be working uh, fairly well today. He's had to modify his output slightly, but after he's done that, it's, it's working really well. Um, from the carrot patch, we are moving into a small conveyor that is filling for some module, and it seems to be doing good. And we're going to move into uh, another replacement or filler module from Kevin. This is one of his original push arms. Always good to just throw in here because it works. From the push arm, we're moving into a double, a, ver a vertically stacked sweeper. Um, I believe Kevin Mitchum uses this as his train loader when it's not being used as a filler module. But right now, it seems to be working just fine, filling the gap here. We're hitting a small ramp, and then we're moving into one of Alex Papil's modules. This is kind of like a lifting arm type module, or lifting buckets. I'm not sure what it's called, but it seems to be working well. It's also running off shared power. Um, you can see there's a little, pow there's a little um, power, com power station down here that's pushing it uh, powered down an axle through Alex's red arm thing and also powering this little uh, conveyor based on the W01 uh, conveyor. From the little uh, conveyor, we are going into Diego's GBC tower module. <clears throat> now, this is Diego's first public GBC module, and it's a monster. It is built, it's about six feet, maybe six foot four tall. It has six of Akiyuki. Six of Akiyuki's more reliable mechanisms in here. It's quite impressive. We are all in awe, at this, looking in awe at this thing. Um, it's been working really well the whole show, which is also surprising because sometimes these, uh, some of these Akiyuki mechanisms can be a little bit, uh, a little bit, they need a little bit of babysitting sometimes, but he's, Diego's got this like dialed in really well. So I think some of the only problems he had was uh, in the input bin, it's just getting overflown with balls. He's made some changes. He's made the input bin bigger. He's added an extra, a couple extra beams in there for agitation. So the buckets are able to pick up the balls without getting stuck. Uh, there will be another video on the channel uh, showing this entire module in detail with Diego going over each of the six modules, as well as the uh, custom command center he built in the back here that is actually running all this through a compact or custom version of Windows. 
It's pretty crazy. So let's move on to the next module. Outside of the GBC tower, it inputs into a shared power system by Kevin Mitchum. The first is his Christmas stepper, which you may have seen before at some other conventions. It slowly steps the balls up using a, jig, a double jigsaw mechanism. Uh, the jigsaw mechanism has been made more popular recently with the uh, Brickworld module for 2019, the Sawtooth, <coughs> uh, which was created by uh, a fellow named John Brost. And from there, we are moving, moving into a, another conveyor belt. This is the banana lift. And this one, this, this conveyor was uh, designed by, was designed by um, Alex Papil. It's a very reliable lift. Alex has instructions for this yellow lift online. Just look, look up Alex Papil, GBC, you'll probably find it. From the yellow lift, we are moving into Kevin's ball pump. Older module, really reliable. Pumps the balls up this chair tower and into his one of, her, one of his newer modules, which is um, a water theme module, which is based on uh, one of Lass's stepper designs. From the water step module, we are moving into one of Kevin's newer Akamiti screws. This one's a little bit different than some of the other Akamiti screws you may have seen because it uses uh, three, three sets of uh, coils, I guess you would say. Uh, moving up there, this was his first uh, version of the Akimini screw, and we'll see a second version of, an, version of it coming up. From there, we're dropping into a simple conveyor, which is also running on a, this is a second set, this, this next set of four modules is a second set of shared power. Conveyor goes into this zigzag uh, ramp out. <coughs> oh, there's actually five modules on this shared power. There is a 10 by 10 stepper here, little green guy that was hiding back here. And then we uh, get stepped up into this blue sweeper, which is, I believe is an old Philo design. And that one's just flipping them up the old uh, blue ramp pieces. And here is uh, the second version of Kevin's Akimini screw, which uh, Kevin's wife actually took his original design and made this one look really good. So this, this, is, this is lovely. And it seems to be working really good. Kevin, has there been any problems with it today? Not yet today, we're doing fine. We had a couple of things the first day where we had a little bit of the, the feed intake wasn't quite aggressive enough because she likes having a super high capacity hopper, but we shimmed it up by one plate and it's been going great. Nice, it's one of my favorites that you brought to, that, brought you, that you brought this year. Uh, from the Acmedi screw, we're dropping into Kevin's Blue Balls module. <clears throat> this one has uh, Zam Zamfor spears inside it, and what happens is the uh, the output ramps filters the Zamfor spears back into the module, and the GBC balls are allowed to keep going. The cool thing about doing a module like this is that no matter if there's GBC balls in the layout or not, you're going to get some something to watch. Um, frequently in GBC when a module breaks down, uh, the modules will sit here empty and the public will be going, where's the balls, where's the balls? But a module like this keeps them entertained briefly while we try to fix everything downstream. From there we're moving into his small 16 by 16 wheel lift, which I believe Kevin built for the uh, contest we had on my website, greatballpick.com. Uh, last year, and I will be doing another GBC build contest later this year as well. So, wait for that. From there, we are dropping into a side conveyor of Kevin's, and this is a pretty standard sideways conveyor. Uh, the balls uh, sit on the pins until they round the corner, at which point the pins spread out and the balls drop down. From there, we're moving into a modu module from the East Coast. I remember seeing this in some other Beyond the Brick videos back uh, previously. And uh, like Tom mentioned in that video, I am really impressed with this, this recirculation function because not only is it easy to operate, it indicates what it's doing by pointing where the balls are gonna go. A great, great mechanism for recirculating. Uh, from there, we are moving into an Akiyuki Cup to Cup version two. It seems to be working fine. Uh, it passes the balls back and forth between these very expensive chrome cups and makes their way up to the top and then down the Akiyuki snake slide. From the snake slide, we're dropping into a double stepper by Mako. This is a very reliable uh, stepper. Mako did a good job um, controlling the friction by having the two steps go up, travel up between two, uh, two vertical beams. 
instead of uh, some of the other older designs that I've seen where you might be um, generating a lot of friction by brick on brick contact. That doesn't happen here, so this thing works really well. And then we are going to be moving into a bunch of modules by John Sherman. John, did you want to talk about your modules? <laughs> Tell us what's new this year. So uh, I'm John Sherman, and, and new for brick, brick Con this year, I have started with the Sawyer Scissor Lift in, in the front. That's my kind of re-engineered version of that. And then next in line is, is my sweep stair, which is actually my second oldest module, but, but one of the most reliable ones. And this year I went for reliability. After the uh, sweep stair, I have uh, Van Beek's rainbow stepper, which I did in lime green. But that one's working really well. And that's followed by switchback, which I took the same mechanism as in the Van Beek stepper, and I doubled it back on itself a couple of times trying to get more height. And this one also has a feature that it will recirculate balls with a simple flick of a switch. So if we have any jams upstream, I can uh, either feed or recirculate. Uh, next comes the, uh, the ball thingy too which is, is based on an internet design. I forget who, who designed that, but it's been kind of beefed up to take the show's uh, pounding. But that's also a very nice one, and that's new for, uh, for this show as well. And then as we head uh, around the corner, we're going to get one of my older models, the three-wheeler, which is three standard wheels stacked up to get some nice height, and then it goes into my version of some flex ramps. And this is also one of my older, more reliable modules. Then we go into uh, Bob's Buckets, which is new for BrickCon. And this module uses some very unusual pieces from Belleville. These buckets are Belleville, and they're not LEGO standard in any direction other than the base. So they're kind of a challenge to use, but I made a bucket wheel that's kind of like uh, the what, some old mining dredge wheels. Um, that outputs through just a, a very simple uh, back and forth ramp and, and moves into another one of my older, uh, more reliable modules, the ball run. This one actually has two different paths the balls that can take that are uh, run by a, a little flipper switch. So every other ball goes on a different, uh, different path. From there, we go into the uh, pusher upper. Nice little green module that has a very slow and, and kind of uh, hypnotic uh, type of motion that's, that's fun to watch. And then my crowd favorite, the escapade that runs the balls up in a, in a nice S pattern. And that outputs with a Akiyuki snake ramp and moves into up and over. Up and over is a, a module that, that actually uses a polarity switch to change the direction of the motor to run the basket up and down. And this this will take this will do at least 30 balls if it's completely full it's the only one I have that'll take that much and then that runs all the way across the back and we go into my module overpass which is one of the critical modules for running uh, whole loops of tables something we can walk under so it's really just a very tall simple chain lift And it goes up. It'll cross up to a six foot span. And then it drops down through through a little rattle tower. And it's just got some pieces in it to slow the balls a little bit so they don't free fall. And then and then uh, outputs into a, a little chain lift here. And that's basically all of my stuff. So back to Matt. Thanks, John. Um, 
Yeah, the, so like I said earlier, the layout at BrickCon has gotten bigger and bigger each year. And thanks to John and uh, Dave, we've got these gateways that make it a lot easier for us to get in and out of the layout. And I love them. I love them. They're the MVPs of the uh, layout to me personally. Um, after his new uh, gateway dumps into a medium version of one of my conveyors, which is being used to fill for some module that had to be uh, pulled off the table. And from there, we're dropping into one of Amanda's modules. She's uh, skinned this Akiyuki staircase in a really nice yellow and purple pattern, and I like it. Um, it's been running fairly good, this, uh, this event. You can see it's kind of like a piston of steps that kind of just pushes the balls up and around the, uh, the cheese slopes on the outside of the piston. And eventually the balls make their way all the way up and down in Akiyuki Snake Slide. From there, we're moving into one of our award-winning modules this year. This is the Hungry Caterpillar. Um, you may know this character from the, the popular uh, child's book. And it is based on a Berthel Van Beek's Rainbow Wave module. Uh, Amanda's reskinned it. So it looks like this lovely caterpillar. And you get this nice motion here of the balls tra traversing along the back of the module. This module is pretty, pretty, pretty intense, just because it has so many gears in it. There's, there must be, Amanda. How many gears are in the Hungry Caterpillar? There are 31 segments. Each segment has two gears as a part of it, plus an extra eight on the back. So, 31, 62, 68, 70 gears somewhere in there. That is a lot of gears. From the Hungry Caterpillar, we are moving into uh, another one of Amanda's modules. It is a double wheel, vertically stacked. This one is in a brown and tan theme. Uh, the balls just travel up the wheels and then they move into this um, nice white staircase, uh, zigzag, kind of a roundabout staircase output thingy. It looks really nice. There we go. From there, the balls are moving out of the staircase into a ramp, and it looks like we have some more filler modules here. These are a couple of push arms provided by Josh, and they're using shared power. One XL is driving both of these. From there, we're moving into one of Amanda's ball pumps. This one is a Seahawks-themed module. I believe it's called Pump It Up. Seahawks. Love the coloring, love the theming. Looks like she's got some of her favorite uh, players on the top of the module as well. Uh, from this ball pump, we are moving into a blue conveyor built off older chain and uh, some Technic bits. This one is one of Dave DeGobi's filler modules. And that takes us up into this little racer track curve, which is going to feed our final gateway. The second gateway module was provided by Dave, and it uses a really long conveyor belt to uh, lift the balls up to the top. Something that Dave's done with this uh, tower module that a lot of other uh, gateway builders don't seem to like to do is that Dave demands that the balls be on an exposed path because he likes the danger of the fact that the balls look like they could drop off the, the cheese slope ramp up there, but they actually don't. Um, a lot of other builders like to encase that. Not Dave. I think it looks great. And it works wonderfully. Uh, from the top of the gateway, Dave has decided to also choose another um, unorthodox output. He has created this giant spiral out of the 2x1 cheese slopes. And this, is just, this module itself is called the uh, cheese, spiral cheese module. That's right. Based on this, it's, it's, when this thing's loaded up, it's great to just kind of stand here and watch all the balls slowly make their way down. Again, like, like the upper, upper ramp, it looks like the balls could fall off at any time and probably should, but they don't. I've seen this module at a couple events now and it's completely solid, doesn't drop balls at all. And then we're back to his water wheel where we started. So that's it for the layout here at BrickCon. Um, biggest GBC layout at BrickCon ever. And I'm, I've heard lots of, lots of other AFOLs talking about how they're going to build modules next year. So I think we're going to maybe need a couple more tables. 
So again, my name is Matt uh, from GreatBallPit.com, and this was the GBC layout here at BrickCon 2019 in Seattle. Um, there will be links in the description uh, for various modules and information and websites if you want to find instructions and other information about the builders here. So see you next year.